right, guys, I am here with the guest before the guest, because today's real guest is Shaman Durek, who absolutely blew my mind, and I cannot wait to share that interview with you guys. We'll get into that in a second, but before my dad has a stroke and flips out because my parents are about to drive to the valley and then they're going to go to the airport. I wanted them to say hello to everybody because they're here in my apartment. Hi. Hello. Hi, bitches. Hi, little bitchy. Bitchy. (laughs) That's my nickname uh, that my parents have given me and I've given to them. So loving. (laughs) So loving. So if you guys haven't checked out my mom's fashion blog, Dirty Martinis and Skinny Jeans, she has the same graphic designer as me. Her blog is amazing and her Instagram is so much fun to follow. So if you guys are into fashion or if you have moms that are into fashion, check out Dirty Martinis and Skinny Jeans on Insta. And of course, we're still trying to get my dad to join Instagram. Will not happen anytime soon. That won't ever be a reality. (laughs) No, it won't. (laughs) What if I told you that you could monetize it? No, I like staying below the radar. Yes, he likes to be below the radar. So since you guys have to leave in a second, I'll ask you something that I ask everyone who joins this podcast as a guest. If you were a color, what color do you feel best represents your energy? Blue. And why? I just like that color. But do you feel that it represents you, like something about blue? Yeah, blue, black is kind of my color, my clothing color. It just looks best, you know. Blue, black? Blue and black. Oh, blue yeah. and black. And you love the ocean. Yeah, I love the ocean. The sky. Sky, you know. Yeah, my dad's an ocean person. We have swam way far out in the ocean together. Yeah, you have. Mommy. Jojo. Color. color. Well, when you said that, the first color that popped into my mind was pink. You're totally pink. I just, yeah, it's just, I'm drawn to it all the time, even though I don't have tons of pink clothes or anything, but I just like pink. It's just happy. Yeah. Pink is bubbly Mm -hmm. and feminine. Mm -hmm. It's very you. Thanks, Jojo. I would almost say that you're cheetah. That's not a color, but if it were, you're very cheetah-esque. Well, I like cheetah and leopard prints for clothing, and I am a bit sassy that way. (laughs) You're very sassy. (laughs) So as a final thing here, because my dad is maniacally checking his watch, I see you. I have a shaman on today's podcast, and as you guys know, I would like to take a shamanic journey myself, become a shaman. How do you guys feel about that? People ask me that all the time. Really? So what do you, yeah, what do you guys think of my spiritual journey? It's, it's so different for us and therefore a little bit scary and concerning. But at the same time, I'm proud of you for following your paths and being such a curious person and learning about so many different things. And I trust your judgment. So that makes me feel better. Daddy? Yeah, we feel that you have a good balance about your life and you don't get too radical in one direction or the other. So we're not too concerned on some of the journeys that you take that (laughs) would not be something that we would do. Yeah, Oh, yeah. Well, I appreciate that. I like how supportive you guys are, even when you don't really understand. Like when I had my new crystal pendulum at the pool the other day. (laughs) Your voodoo stone? (laughs) My dad was calling it a voodoo stone. And my mom was more believing in it because we were asking it questions. And I gave her the chance to hold it. And she saw that it was answering her questions. Yes, Because I thought you were moving your hand and she wasn't. I wasn't. It looks like it when you see people doing it. So I get it. That's pretty crazy. But yeah, for everybody listening, because people always ask me, what what does your family think? What do your friends think of your spiritual path? Since it's a bit newer for me, I thought it would be fun to ask you guys that. Yeah, good question. 
Yes. Well, I love you guys. I'll oh, we love, we you. love you and I'll... happy birthday. Oh, thanks. Oh, in yeah. two days. This podcast comes out on my actual birthday. <laughs> happy birthday then happy today. Birthday. 27 years ago, you bitches were in labor. In labor <laughs> and our life was never the same. That's right. We've been in pain ever since. <laughs> we. We. Well, my parents are moving here because they really miss me. So you can't be in that much pain. I guess not. Love you guys. Love you, little bitchy. All right. I just walked my parents out and really sad. They were here all weekend. Now they're leaving to head back to Sacramento, but soon they'll be moving here. So I'm very, very, very pleased about that. And now I can properly intro you to today's podcast guest, Shaman Durek. So I first discovered Shaman Durek on someone else's podcast, the That's So Retrograde podcast. I fell in love with his story and then I had the chance to meet him at Mind Body Greens Revitalize just about a month ago. He gave the opening speech at Revitalize and basically blew me to my knees. His words were just so from the heart, so deeply rooted in what I could tell was channeling, intuition, a higher self, whatever you want to call it. And during a really difficult time on this earth, I would say he brings so much love, so much light, and so much knowing from another place. And his story is just beyond, beyond inspirational and interesting. I can truly say that I love him as a person. I fell in love with him while he was here in this apartment and you guys will hear this is a really special episode. I cried. He got teary eyed. He blew me away. If you guys loved the episode with Nicola, episode 52, or if you loved different episodes with Colleen McCann, Style Ritual, Shaman, then you'll absolutely love Shaman Durek. He is incredible. And even if you haven't heard those other episodes, you'll still love him because he's captivating and he travels the world giving people healings and he does a lot of stuff. So definitely check out his website and we'll talk all about that in the show. So I don't want to talk too much. And before we dive into this episode, I wanted to thank today's sponsor of the Balance Wand podcast, Prep Dish. So Prep Dish is kind enough to be offering two free weeks for all of my amazing Soul on Fire listeners. If you go to PrepDish.com slash blonde, that's PrepDish.com slash B-L-O-N-D-E. And Prep Dish has an archive of meal prep ideas. So this is of course amazing for people who are on the go, which is I'm pretty sure absolutely everyone. Um, My friends who are moms, people who travel a lot, take care of their fur babies like I do. So really this will just help save you time and help you be efficient in the kitchen. It'll also help you eat healthy, gluten-free, dairy-free, and paleo, all using real foods only. And it really just makes your life more stress-free with tasty, delicious meals. So Prep Dish essentially is a meal planning service where every week you get an email with a grocery list and prep ahead instructions so all of your meals are ready for the week. So you don't need to guess, you don't need to estimate how much you need to buy of something or get to the grocery store and just stare at everything like I usually do. Instead, you can think about all of the things that inspire you and keep you feeling creatively stimulated versus worrying about what you're going to make for yourself or your significant other or your family throughout the week. So I really like this October meal plan that they have. You can go to prepdish.com slash menus to check out some of their past menus and their current menus. And you can click on different things like gluten-free, paleo, et cetera. And I usually go back and forth between the two, but a couple of really delicious things that they have on their site for October are a pumpkin seed crusted chicken with a vegan broccoli soup, a lemon basil shrimp with Italian quinoa salad, a veggie taco soup, cranberry pecan baked pears. Those are some gluten-free meals. And then paleo, Some of those meals, as you guys know, I love the paleo life, even though I don't ascribe to the label. They have a turkey taco soup, 
um, for a snack. They recommend grapes and pistachios. Breakfast, a delicious Swiss chard, mushroom, onion, and goat cheese frittata. Who does not love goat cheese? Uh, Week three of October, which I suppose is next week, coming up, they have a kale and caramelized onion frittata with grapes, a salad of greens with shredded carrot, radish and sunflower seeds, breakfast of banana walnut muffins. The list goes on. So definitely check out the menu so that you can see what you're getting yourself into. And also make sure to go to prepdish.com slash blonde, B-L-O-N-D-E, to redeem your two free weeks of meal prep ideas straight from Allison herself. Thanks so much, Prepdish, for sponsoring the podcast. And without further ado, let's dive into this episode with the incredible, amazing, inspiring Shaman Durek. Okay, guys, I am sitting here with a very exciting guest today. I have Shaman Durek, who I met at Mind Body Green. He gave an incredible opening speech that gave me chills and made me feel like I made the right decision by attending Revitalize, which my listeners know I'm not always a conference person, a big group person, but you made me feel like I was in the right place on that opening night. It was beautiful. So I'm so glad you're here. And why don't you just say hello to our listeners and tell them a little bit about who you are. First of all, thank you so much for that wonderful and kind introduction. And I'm very happy that you actually came to Revitalize to be able to experience um, just the magic and the beauty and the connection of, you know, just people gathering and sharing and loving. And I think that's just a, such a remarkable thing nowadays. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Shaman Durek. I'm a third generation shaman. I have been a shaman since I was 11 years old, but I actually took my rites of passage when I was 28. So that's when you actually become a full-fledged shaman. But the whole point is that once you step into shamanism, you're already a shaman. It's just now you're just learning the kind of the techniques and tools so you can open your vessel up to be able to be a bridge. And then once the spirits come through you, you just, you know, you learn all the information that's necessary and stuff from your elders and from the different spirits and from the earth itself. So I am now 42 years old. I've been spending my life uh, bringing shamanism as a lifestyle choice um, worldwide, teaching people how to adapt shamanism into their lives and using old world culture and bringing it into a modern day way that they can actually adapt uh, the facilities of change through it be through technology or innovation through um, uh, allopathic medicine to you name it. Um, I'm going across the whole board, but my main focus is supporting women and helping them to see their power and recognize themselves as leaders. Wow. That's so cool. I absolutely love that that's your focus because within shamanism, there seem to be so many paths. And we were even just talking about all of the different things that you do as a shaman, the different services you offer and taking people really deep within themselves to heal, get past their demons, all that kind of stuff. So maybe just explaining what is a shaman to people listening would also be helpful. Yeah, so a shaman is a bridge, um, uh, how we say, a co-mediator to both yourself and to your ancestors and to the spirit plane, and then teaching you how to govern your powers within yourself that innately have been with you since you were a child through all the lessons that you've learned and the things that you've garnered in your life as you were developing, and then helping you to facilitate the natures of those powers into your life that facilitate change or help you to um, elevate yourself in what you're doing or to bring about your message more clear and also to clear blockages in your energy so that you can access energies and, and, and tap into the source of energy that gives you those informations yourself. So, you know, it, a lot of times people think shamanism is just someone who takes something from a tree, a, a plant like ayahuasca or a boga or a peyote or you know, morning glory or any of these things. And that doesn't constitute a shaman. That constitutes someone who works with the plant directly. A shaman is someone who is here to be a steward to your own power and to recognize that, you know, I don't walk in front of you. We walk together and to be able to get you to a place where you recognize your power so you don't look outside of yourself and you always go inside. Wow. So I can't believe you've been doing this since you were 11 yeah. and this has been in your family for many years. So I'm generations. Very, yeah. Generations. Yeah. Definitely is the way to say it. 
I'm curious, when you were a child, did you feel connected in, connected to the earth, connected to different people in a way that you knew was special? You know, I was five years old when actually my, um, my gifts started becoming um, apparent to me. And I think the first was um, seeing the energies around people, um, hearing the spirits talking to me, hearing my ancestors talking to me, being able to see into different doorways of, of, of dimensions of perception. You know, not just seeing what we see in the physical world, which is matter trapped light. Um, and, you know, and atoms, you know, bouncing off each other in, in ricocheting formations that create the substance of what it is, but actually being able to see beyond uh, those substances, to see the energy frequencies of those substances and to feel them. And so for me as a kid, I mean, I remember my mom always saying to me, like, I would go into the room and I would start spinning around and I would fall in the ground and my eyes would roll in the back of my head and I'd go in the trance and I'd start speaking from the, to the ancestors and repeating what they were saying to her. You know, and my family knew right away that I was the one that my grandmother, um, you know, wanted to be the shaman because it was so talked about in the family so much that for me, it was, you know, as a kid, it was just a part of me. And then as I got into kindergarten, uh, more elementary school, I started realizing there was something different. And I thought this was normal for everyone. And then when I realized that it wasn't, because I would tell my friends things like, oh, did you see, did you see why the teacher was upset today? You know, I'm they be like, I have no idea what you're talking about, you know? And I'm like, you didn't realize that she had a fight with her husband last night. You didn't see that energy. And then I realized, wow. Okay. And then my dad was, you know, he was really about, you know, like, don't let people know so much about, you know, our, our heritage, our gifts and stuff like that, because you're going to be outcast. You're not going to have friends. And, you know, he was right. I, I did spend a great portion of my childhood, um, isolated from other kids because parents were scared of me. But, you know, when you're a shaman, you do play the role as a hermit. You play the role as the one who steps outside the tribe to look from a different perspective so that you can be there for the tribe. And in order for that to happen, you, you, you do spend a lot of time in that solitude place and be able to go within and really see how can we best support the people? How can we best support, you know, um, people realizing where they, what, what, what's inside of them and where they can go? So... But, you know, I didn't, my dad wanted to protect me. So he didn't let me start my training until 11 years old. And it gave me some time to kind of get some more clear perspective on it as a kid, to be a kid. And then also decide if this is the path that I really want to take. Because being a shaman isn't a walk in the park. It's, um, it's I can say for the, the, the better sake of saying, it's really a truth of, of you know, devotion, um, you know, unconditional love, um, moving beyond the barriers of fears and, uh, that humans um, hold. As, as, a, as a way to react and understand those fears and go into the dark places that people don't want to go to, you know, and then go there and then come back unscathed and then bring the information back and say, oh, this is what's really behind the, you know, the curtain, so to say, you know. I always love the story of the Wizard of Oz because um, when Toto went behind the curtain and found, and found that the wizard was like just tinkering and stuff like that. So I always saw that as my consciousness. My consciousness is always going beyond the curtain of the reality of, you know, both women and men and seeing what is the, what's going on behind the scenes versus what people actually are looking at. Yeah. What a cool thing to be able to unveil what's really going on. Yeah. It's amazing. So then you did your rite of passage when you were 28. What happened between 11 and 28? Were you living a more mainstream life at any point? And then you came back to the shamanism or was this the journey the whole time? Um, it's been a journey the whole time. There's only one time that I actually took a break. I took a walk about uh, away from shamanism because my elders told me that like, you should go and try to do the things that you really thought that you would do if you weren't a shaman and see if it like applied to you. And one of them was to be a dancer and the other one was um, to get involved in, in like being a lawyer. And um, the lawyer one fell immediately, very quickly. Um, and then I went to New York to go study dance at Alvin Ailey. And I, you know, I got into that world of dance and then I got picked up as a model. And, but I felt, I felt empty. Nothing felt right to me. And then I just immediately came back to it, you know, and decided that I was going to devote my life to um, the development of humankind and, and, and really helping our, our species, you know, facilitate new ways of thought and, um, and gain more emotional intelligence so that we can actually thrive and adapt ourselves to creating, you know, a future that's, that's able for us to be able to live in. Yeah. Wow. So I listened to your story on the So Retrograde podcast. Yeah. I love those girls. Yeah. And I was 
incredibly moved by the story that you told about getting really sick and dying essentially and going to heaven or whatever it is yeah. that one would call it. And I was wondering if you'd be comfortable talking a little bit about that and how that has in turn affected your work now and how you approach life and teach people just that whole story. Yeah. So, I mean, basically in shamanism, we have a rites of passage. Every shaman has one if they're going to become, if they fully to, to commit to the ancestors in the spirit world. They have to show that everything that they learned is actually adaptable and usable in the physical world. Um, a lot of times shamans um, will at that point make a decision if they're going to continue this path or if they're going to bow out and say, you know what, I just don't, I just want to work with energies, but I don't want to go the extra, you know, step that it would take for you to be able to say, okay, now I'm here to be a shaman and my life is a shaman and so forth. And I made that decision when I was in the jungle in Belize and I was with a medicine woman and, you know, she had said to me, you know, you have a choice to go forward, you know, cause I'm a spirit shaman and spirit shamans are one of the oldest shamans on the planet. And there's root shamans, there's earth shamans, there's fire shamans and water shamans in Bali. And, um, a spirit shaman is one who spends their life training, interacting with different spirits from different realms, building a relationship with them. And then if they need, uh, they can call on that spirit to assist them. And the spirits do it because of the relationship of friendship, you know? And so we can see spirits, we can talk to them, we can interact with them, we can call upon their help. And, um, but to do that, you have to really break yourself down to get to a place of removing this idea of um, limitation that we create as human beings. And so the rites of passage for a spirit shaman is death. I've heard of some shamans, you know, who've lost their eyesight and gone blind and, you know, was paralyzed and, you know, but every shaman that I met with, including some of the Lakotas and some of my friends in Africa, they said, um, you know, you chose to be a spirit shaman. I, I have to applaud you because it's not the easiest path. And um, so at age 28, uh, when I got back from the jungle, I basically woke up and there was a spirit in the room and it basically said, are you ready? And I was just, you know, first of all, I was taken back by it because it was a shadowy form in front of me. And then it reached into my bodies and I fell in, I, it reached into my body. And I fell on the floor and I started hyperventilating and I, and then I got to a telephone and called a friend and my friend came with his truck and he grabbed me, picked me up. And I had like four seizures. My head smashed into the windshield dashboard and, um, he called the ambulance to take me from the car. And I had another rolling seizure and I came out to it. And the guy in the ambulance was, um, looked at me and says, I said, what happened? And he said, you had a seizure. And I was like, Oh, I never had a seizure before. So that was an interesting experience because for me, you know, being a shaman, everything is about an experience. And so I never had a seizure before. So I was like, it's interesting. And he started laughing. And so they took us into the hospital and they put me on a stretcher. My friend came in with me. And then within, I would say, maybe less than 20 minutes, I was already crossing into the spirit world. I started seeing this woman talking to me. Um, she was really beautiful and powerful and loving and nurturing and sort of telling me, you know, don't fight when, when it happens. And, you know, the more you fight, it's going to hurt. And we're, we're going to take you out of your body. Like you're going to be okay. You know? And then I said, is this happen like this for everyone? And then like, every time someone dies, we come and we tell them, you know, to, 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 to let go so we can ease them out of the, out of the body. And then uh, I asked when it was going to happen. And she said it was going to be like two minutes. And I looked at my friend Marcus and I looked at him and I said, you know, um, I'm going to die. And he was like, no, you're not. I'm going to go get a, I'm going to go get a doctor right now. You're going to be fine. I said, no, I'm sorry. And I said, I would don't want to die alone. I started crying and he stood there and he said, what do you want me to do? I said, I just don't want to die alone. He goes, then I'll stay here with you. And so he, you know, he grabbed my hand and he goes, when it's going to start. And I'm like, they said, it's going to start soon. And then all of a sudden they felt this excruciating pain in my body where my body started shaking and I felt knives stabbing me in every area of my body. I felt all my body heat up like fire. And then all of a sudden I felt this restriction in my chest. And then I felt my lungs collapse and I couldn't breathe. And so I kept hitting my throat to get oxygen. And he, you know, went and screamed for a nurse. And yeah, I was suffocating basically in a very uncomfortable way. And, you know, I'm not going to lie in the sense of people are like, you know, uh, it, death really was scary. And for me, I'll never forget because I couldn't talk. I remember screaming in my head. I changed my mind. I changed my mind. And I kept hearing this beautiful voice say, it's, you know, you've already put this into motion. We have to, you have to make the journey. 
And in shamanism, I know what journeys mean. Like you have to follow the journey. If the canoe takes you down the river, you don't put the oar, the oars in the water. You let go and you let the river take you wherever you end up. That's where you're supposed to be. And so I just kept, you know, like hearing her and talking to me and she was soothing me, even though I was still screaming in my head. And the doctors came, they put a hole in my neck trying to get air, but no air would come. And they tried everything they could. And I just remember convulsing. My body got really intense to the point where I was shaking profusely. And then my arms and legs were shooting up in the sky. And then I heard his voice keep saying, let go. You're fighting to hold on, let go. And I kept saying, I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm scared. And then finally, I couldn't, I couldn't hold on anymore. My eyes started to bulge out. And then I, um, I, got, like, I felt like a wave of water came in and washed me out of my body. I could hear everything, and I could see everything that was happening in my surroundings. I could hear the conversations happening. I could hear my friends screaming and crying. I could, you know, I could see the doctors doing everything they can to save me. And then I just remember being in front of my, um, my aunt, my grandmother, and they told me, you know, through this transition, you have one more transition to go through. And I remember the whole room being like liquid. Like as I was looking up at the bottom of a pool and I'd see the light on the top of the water, everything was like liquid and I was inside water. And then I saw myself in an ocean, but it was black and I was being swished around in this ocean. And, um, and then all of a sudden I, these lights of colors that I've never seen before came and they got brighter and brighter and brighter. And then all of a sudden I realized I was inside of my mother's womb. And, um, I remember seeing the walls and the lights coming from outside of her skin from inside the womb. And then um, as I was inside the womb, I was also watching her give birth. And it was all at the same time. And, um, and then I saw, you know, that my dad wasn't there. And then he came later. And then I went from that to like my first day of school, like every minute of every experience that I've ever had. And not only just the experiences that I had, but what it felt like for me and then watching it. And then also what it felt like for others based on the things that I did. And then after it, it got all the way through my whole life, all the way up to the point of my death, I just felt this complete love for everything. And then I saw it just all wash away and I was swimming in this liquid and there was this light in the, in like, not in saying the distance, but all around me. And I was in the light. And I remember saying to myself in consciousness, I'm home. Like this is the, this is creation. This is God. And I felt this warmth rush through my whole entire being. And then I was like, waking up and I was on this beach and I didn't have a body, but I knew that I was on the beach because I saw the sand and I saw the beach and I looked and I saw other people on the beach. And this woman walks up to me almost like she was gliding, gliding over to me. And she said, um, you have questions I know. And immediately my question started firing off. Like, why do people suffer? Why is there war? Why is there death? Why is there sickness? Why is there disease? Why do people suffer? Why do kids have to die? Why do animals have to die? I went through like every single human suffering, everything that I couldn't like understand while being on earth. And the answer she gave me was malfunction in thinking. It was like one answer for everything. It was just malfunction in thinking. And I didn't question it. It was like, yeah, like, yeah, that's it malfunction and thinking it just everything was just so light there was a sound uh when i looked up at the sky i went um i she asked me if i what i wanted to be it, what am i bought what do i want my body to look like if i want a body or do i not want a body so she said you can do any you can choose to be anything you want and i said i would like to be the way i was before and all of a sudden my hands appeared and i remember touching my hands and i didn't feel bones Everything was warm. Like it was someone that was like the best food you could ever eat, like the best warm blanket, the best conversation with your friends. It was just warm and like everything was so wonderful. And like I remember touching the sand and playing with it in my fingers. And it was just like this beautiful sound and glistening. And I saw other people and she had asked me if I wanted to um to ask more questions or do I am I feeling that I want to go be around other people? And I said I wanted to be around other people. And she said, how would you like to get there? And she gave me these options. And I said, I would like to glide there. And then we started floating over the grass. And I saw this beautiful like, like lake and ocean in the distance and mountains and trees. And like, it was the most amazing colors that I've ever seen. So vibrant. Everything was so rich and the, so warm and beautiful. And it wasn't like a warmth, like, oh, my God, please turn off the heater warmth. It was like a warmth of like, this is the best feeling you could ever imagine. And then we ended up in this area and there were all these people, the people, some people were on the grass, some people were walking and talking. There was like 
people sitting around in the park area. Some people were like, you know, running and playing. Kids were playing and there are all these glowing energies around them. And I had asked her what it was. And she says, the place that you see is everyone's perfect place created by consciousness because they're like one, the consciousness is all one. And the consciousness creates the best place for everyone to experience by matching all the consciousness. And um, so I was like, so what I'm experiencing right now is the, what I feel is the best place for me, but someone else is experiencing as the best place for them and so on and so on. And she's like, yes. Um, I met this little girl um, and she had told me that she, you know, didn't get a chance to be a little child on earth. And so she wanted to be a child there. And after a while, maybe she'll choose to be a woman or a male. So she was telling me about that. And I mean, I can go on because I felt like I was there for like a year, but it was like the most amazing experience. I got to see my friends, my friends who died. I got to see my grandparents. I got to see my uncle. I got to see my cousin who died. I got to visit um, uh, these places where you can look at all the many earths that exist. And um, so I learned about the quantum understanding of earth and that, you know, we live, um, that we don't have one body, that we actually are um, living in multiple universes simultaneously. Um, I learned about um, the fact that there is no past lives, that our past lives are spirits that have joined with us and they had those lives and they're sharing their echo with us so that we can experience their knowledge and information. And so that basically, like, um, that's the reason why when I came back to earth, I found out later why every like 10 women can believe that they were Cleopatra because they were all Cleopatra at one time. And then, you know, I learned about, um, you know, um, what, what is happening, like what is happening in, in the consciousness, what is consciousness, what is creation. And, um, and then I got to play a lot. Like one of the things that I loved about being on the other side is that you got to play every, every second and you can sleep if you want to sleep and you can eat if you want to eat and you don't gain weight. And, you know, you, you, you want to be with someone, you just think of them. I want my, one of my friends who died in a car crash, I went to visit him and he had his own, he's had, he had his own world, his own place that was all his, his dream of what he feels that is right for him. And everyone has that. And it's like, it's like the best way I explain it to my friends when I came back in my body later on, when I was able to speak after being in a coma was, um, it, it's like, uh, uh, a computer chip that has limitless space and in that limitless space, everyone has their own heaven. Um, and it, you know, it was, it was amazing. I got to be a sound energy wave. I was flying in the air with my friends, bouncing off each other and making color waves. Um, I got to involve myself in bringing new ideas to people on different planets and, and as well as earth. I got to uh, learn a lot about everything, even what darkness is and why it exists. And, you know, and then they asked me if I wanted to stay there or if I wanted to go back. And I said, I want to go back because I knew that I had to share this information. I had to, you know, to, to uh, share this with people and, and, and teach people to love beyond fear and to, to, to like, you know, we are such a, a dramatic species and we're so, we, we, we're, we, we're, we, take, we are so serious all the time. And and there, no one is serious and everyone is like kids in the playground playing with things that just don't hurt you. It's just, it's, it's fun and it never stops and there's no one judging you and anything. And there's just pure love. And what I found out on the other side is that that can be here as well too. But in order for us to get to that space, we have to remove ourselves out of this um, incorrect thinking and this victim consciousness and this domesticated way of raising our children. And you know, through good and bad and, you know, you're good and you get love and you're bad, you get punished. And it's all been um, a distorted viewpoint. And so we go in our lives looking for validation, looking to be loved by creating things, owning things and doing things instead of realizing that we're loved all the time, every time and every second, every minute, every day, every hour. It never stops. It's just ceaseless. It's just constantly present all the time and all it's asking for us to do is be aware of it and when i decided to come back um it was amazing because it was like i got i went back to the same beach and i went in this water and i was swimming in the water and then it was like a something shot me through the water and i was with other people who were going back as well and i was flying through space i saw other planets i saw a planet with like several moons i saw a water planet with no it was just all pure water I saw all these different things and you could, I could stop at any time and stare and rotate myself in space and see all the different dimensions and then keep going. And then I got to earth and I was floating above the earth and 
I'll never forget that feeling of being above the earth and seeing everything and seeing it for what it is and feeling so, so happy to come back. And, um, and they told me before I left, you know, they said that, um, you know, you're going to go through a lot of suffering when you go back, you're going to do a lot of pain, but don't believe what the people tell you because they're only seeing a small portion of the truth and it's smaller than they even know. And, um, so I had no fear of coming. There was no fear where I was. And then I came streaming towards the earth and, um, it was like I went through this darkness, this weird, dark, liquid energy as I got back into the earth. And then I ended up in my body. And I remember the doctor sh- putting a, an adrenaline needle in our thing in my chest and like shocking me. And the pain was so unbearable, the shock that went through my body. And I, I rose up. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't see. And then I heard this voice say, um, hold on, we're going to plug you back in. It was like the weirdest, like high pitched sounds, like talking, this voice talking to me. And then I saw all these pixels showing up with high pitched sounds. And then my eyes open and I could see the doctor and he's like, we got him, we got him. And I remember like, like trying to wailing my arms and I couldn't, I couldn't feel my body moving. And I kept hearing him say, you're paralyzed. Um, you have brain damage. And like, um, and then they induced me in a coma for two months um, the journey back, being in a wheelchair, you know, um, being on dialysis for eight years, uh, lost my kidney, livers, had problems, um, couldn't breathe, brain damage, couldn't use my hands, um, pretty much a vegetable. But there was this voice talking to me, telling me how to put my body back together. And then there was this other voice talking to me, telling me, like, why did you come back? You should just leave. And I knew that other voice was the, was the plague, was the, the, the dark matter that infests the people on the planet that keeps them in fear. And I was like, I know what you are, and I'm not going to listen to you. And I haven't. And that's why I'm able to do what I do now, because I got myself out of that wheelchair when the doctors told me. And, you know, it's nothing. And I mean, I have a lot of respect for medicine. But I also I have respect for allopathic medicine. I have respect for holistic medicine. I think that the two combined actually creates quite a synthesis for us to be able to develop our um, our, our knowledge of wellness and and health and um, you know bringing new information to the table. But you know we're not quite there yet. But I do believe um, in the formidable years that are to come. I do believe that uh, this will come about. But I know for myself when I was in the hospital and the you know all these doctor was coming in every day looking at clipboard and shaking his head from right to left which means no which to me was like no you know you're not going to make it then i would hear the conversations he had with my parents and telling them like you know um i'm probably going to die again within a day or so because everything is just going wrong and i remember this woman coming in the room and just telling me remember what we taught you remember what we told you don't listen to them they're only going off the small information that they have if you believe in that information you become you become a part of that information and you become a part of the system of that information and i thought that was very interesting and so every time the doctor came in and said stuff to me i just was like you're lying you know i couldn't speak because i had tubes everywhere but i was saying it in my thoughts I kept saying you're lying to me you're lying. You only, and I like, and I wasn't mad at them or anything. I just knew that they were going off of very small information. And what I saw and what I experienced was much more than what they could understand. Wow. Wow. I mean, that is truly unbelievable to go to a place and to have that experience and then to come back into your body and experience pain and suffering and sickness and the opposite of this blissful yeah. place where you were. So I'm getting, that's why I'm getting emotional right. right now because it's not easy being on earth. I mean, I, I feel for people. I mean, you know, as a, as a shaman and I have this knowledge, like I watch, like I, I, I work with a lot of religious people. I work with a lot of people from different religious cultures and, you know, I hear them talk about you know, God being mad at them and, you know, that, that, you know, they have to do this or they're going to go to hell. And, and I just feel for them because I'm like, you don't even understand how much of your life you've been robbing away because of darkness created these, these distortions and have you buying into these fears. So you would be afraid of your own creator. So you can't ever come into your power. 
and you can just constantly be a tool to the system. And, and I have a lot of respect for religion because I studied world religion and, you know, I've studied Buddhism and I studied, you know, um, Christianity and, um, and I studied, you know, the Quran and, and, um, Tibetanism and, you know, um, I've gotten into, um, you know, the Bhagavad Gita, the Ugavad Gita, and like, you know, really diving into these people's ideas and belief systems, you know, even down to, you know, Jungian and like really getting into the, the understanding of psychology and what it is. And what I have found in all of that discovery is um, this, this constant need still to, to play victim and the victim consciousness exists in, in pretty much all of them. And the, the, the idea that your karma exists would denote that God is a Santa Claus theory. The idea that God punishes is a Santa Claus theory. I always use the idea of Santa Claus theory. I call it, S, I call it SC. Whenever talk, someone talks to me, I'm like, okay, we're talking about SC. Okay, let's go into that. You know, and it's like the Santa Claus theory, right? So if you're good, you get rewarded. And if you're bad, you get punished. I said, I can prove that theory so incorrect thinking um, by the billions because there are so many people on the planet who don't do the things from the place of pure love and they get more rewarded and more rewarded and more rewarded. And, you know, and what I found out through dying, which has really helped me in my life is that I found out what creation really is and it's creation and it's inside of us. It's inside of everything. And the, the core cell of creation does only one thing. It just creates. So whatever you come out of your mouth, whatever you feel, whatever you think about, it's creating. And so if you think you need to get punished, then you'll get punished. And if you feel that you need to have bad karma because you did something bad, then you'll have bad karma. And if you don't believe you'll have bad karma, then you won't. And it's like, you know, and until people realize that the power really lies with us um, and all these, you know, things that we, 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 we hold up as what we call spirituality. And to me, spirituality is common sense. And a lot of people think, you know, cause I work with, I don't work with the, the percentage of society that is like going to these spiritual festivals and things like that. Most of my clientele are the mainstream lawyers, doctors, Wall Street execs, people who've never even done yoga and then their whole entire life, people who, um, you know, been studying religion and like, you know, it's, um, or who are atheists. And the thing is, what I have found, um, is that a lot of them will come to me and say, Oh, well, I'm very logical. I don't believe in these spiritual things. And I said, well, logic is, um, is basically uh, one who goes on discovery and discovers and draws hypotheses and conclusions to be able to make an exact response of factual information about before they decide they're not going to believe something or believe something. And what you're basically saying is that you're just chalking it up because you don't understand it as it doesn't exist. And that's not logic at all. In fact, that's actually fairy tale and fantasy. And that the very thing that you actually think that, you're, that you think other people are in is the very thing that you're in. And when I tell them that, they're like, what? And I'm like, yeah, I said, you know, a wise person is one who sees many pathways and an unwise person is one who only sees one. And then I would rather see all the pathways before me so I can make a decision based on my own evolution and based on my conscious of where I would like to place myself versus think I only have one choice and I have to stay on that choice. And if there's no, there's no other way. And the container of humanity operates within these collective groupings of, you know, if you're a person who has unconditional love, you belong to the unconditional love group. And that's what you send to the source. But there's people who don't believe in unconditional love. They believe that love is something you have to work for. You have to earn, you have to meet someone's approval. You have to people please. So they go into the grouping of love is something you work for but all of these things what happens is every time someone in that group evolves out of into a higher consciousness they also evolve that group as well and that's pretty powerful stuff that is really powerful it's so true that's i mean my mind is still being wrapped around everything that you just explained about your experience your journey it's really unbelievable and I'm just stuck on the fact that you decided to come back here to earth. And it sounds like you made that decision. You had the choice. And I think it's so powerful that you chose to come back and spread the love, the messages that you learned. It's going to help so many people and does help so many people. It's just incredible. And maybe that's another true definition of a shaman which is very cool. So I'm just so impressed by that. So impressed by that choice because that's a hard choice to make. But when you're on the other side, you don't see it that way. You know, you see only love and you see only 
you see that the human things on earth are really insignificant to the bigger picture. So you don't look at like, oh, I'm going to go back and suffer. You're like, oh, I'm going to go back and have another experience of yes. human suffering. Yes, that makes sense. So you spoke a little bit about the parallel universes, like our soul potentially lives in lots and lots of different places. That's something that I talk about on this podcast and something I've recently started learning more about. I feel like I've been able to kind of get more in touch with myself living in other universes, planets, and it's been really cool. So what do you have to say about that? Or how can we get in touch with that? So first, in order to get in touch with anything, you have to remove your judgment, right? Because judgment blocks information and data. Because it, you actually lock, what, when you judge something, you actually lock it in a box and you, you create um, an idea about something. And then your ego, which is your basically your protector, or should I say it's your, what I used to always make jokes about, I call the ego the great paperweight, right? Because the ego's job, everyone is like, oh, the ego, you got to get rid of the ego. No, you don't get rid of the ego. You transform the ego to align with that which you want to create for your highest good. The ego's job is to take whatever you believe as a creator and make it real for you. So you believe the world in which you live in. And then if someone comes and says something opposing to what you believe, the ego becomes your lawyer and defends it. And, um, and so the whole thing is to realize that when the ego is coming out, right? And so to access other dimensions, you know, the, the, you, I call it becoming liquid. And I, I talk about this a lot with, with my students and uh, becoming liquid is also removing your attachment. Like even now, as I'm talking to you, I, have, I don't have an attachment to everything I'm saying. I, I, I'm sharing with you information, but I know that by not having an attachment to it, I'm able to become liquid and go under the next curtain and find out more information from the information that I'm actually giving you, right? And so this is, that's the path of a shaman. The path of a shaman is one who knows, one who's willing to journey beyond the veil, right? And then bring back information for the tribe so that the tribe can thrive and, and, um, and become, you know, more grander than, you know, where they were, where they were before. And so tapping into these other aspects, the first thing you have to do is remove your judgment of what you think things are. Because a lot of times, like when even I explain to people about the like, underworld or darkness, they, they can't believe in it because they don't understand it. So when you don't understand something, you just assume that you, don't, you choose not to believe in it. But the thing is that when you're dealing with spirit, you have to be willing to um, not question what spirit is telling you, but go on the journey of spirit. So let's, let's do a little exercise. Yeah? Okay. okay. Yeah. I love it. Perfect. So what I want you to do is I want you to uh, pull up a negative thought that's in your, that, you have, that you have lingering around from maybe a week, a month ago, or you know, whenever. Okay. Up. I have it. Okay. Um, and uh, what's the negative thought? So the negative thought is um, basically I've, I feel like taken from a lot of the time mm -hmm. um, that people reach out to me just to take something or they want something. And I have some specific people in mind um, who I feel this way from constantly. And it can be very defeating and make me feel very just negative, like kind of make me want to put up a wall and not be so accessible and approachable. Okay. Well, let's, you know what? I'm going to do something right now because the guys are like, Derek, let's just clear that. Okay. Okay. So first of all, let me just give you the education of that from a shamanic point of view. Okay. You heard what you just said. You said, I feel like I want to put up a wall. Okay. So what does that mean? In shamanism, that means you really want to put up the wall. It has nothing to do with these people. You've called these people in to give you a reason to put up the wall so you can be right about what you really believe, which is um, people just want to take from you. But is that really the issue? No. The real issue is that you don't want to um, be open to love on a deeper level. So there's no such thing as someone taking from you. Let's just get clear about that. Um, the idea of someone taking from you means that you are a person who gives with the idea of expectation, right? Um, like, for instance, for me, I give, 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 give. People can take as much as they want. I don't really care because I'm a giver. That's who I am, and I'm okay with it, you know? Um, no one can use me because if I don't want to give, then I'll say I'm not going to give right now, right? But no one can act. If someone's a taker, and that's where they're at in their evolution, then that's where they're at. It doesn't make them a bad person. It's just that that's where they're at. And, and so I'm going to remove my judgment of what that is. So what does that mean? That means that you have a part inside of you, that spirit that's, 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 that's inside linking into this conscious thought that is basically wanting you to find something wrong to do what you really want to do anyway, which is to just shut yourself down so that you don't have to be open. And then, but you have a, but, but to know that on a conscious level means you would judge that because you'd be like, well, I'm a spiritual person. Why would I want to do that? So what do you do? You make sure someone gives you a, a, a clarification reason, right? Meaning justification 
some kind of situation or incident that takes place that you can actually uh, say, look, this is the reason why I'm doing it. Now I'm justified. So that way it, it actually works for the spiritual side of you because now you can convince your spiritual side the reason why I'm doing it is because of this, 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 and this, right? So we call that justification clarification, right? But in shamanism, we have to understand that the action of calling these people in was for you, to, has two sides. It can be a gift for you by recognizing the beauty of it, of their taking, and also um, it can also not be a gift for you if you judge it and try to make it um, and, and go into the issue of what your real fear is, which is to open yourself up. So what I want you to do is I want you to take that thought and I want you to say out loud, um, where, do you, where do you come from? Where do you come from? And then tell me what it says. And do you see how your eyes are going up like you're looking for the answer? Uh-huh. You know why you're looking for the answer? Why? Because you don't like what it's telling you. So say this to it. <laughs> say, um, am I judging you right now? Am I judging you right now? Yes. See how it responds immediately? Right. 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 And say, why am, I, why am I judging you instead of embracing you? Why am I judging you instead of embracing you? Because you're scared. Right. That's what it says. That's right. Mm -hmm. And what am I scared of that makes me not um, embrace you? What am I scared of that makes me not embrace you? The truth. Mm -hmm. And what is the truth? Ask, this, ask the spirit. What is the truth? What is the truth? Hmm. This is so interesting. So it says, <laughs> the truth is you have infinite love to give. You're just getting in your own way. That's right. So you have infinite love to give and you're trying to convince yourself for a reason of not to give it. Mm -hmm. Right? Do you see the humor? Yes. <laughs> right? So we can never get upset with ourselves when we go through our spiritual transformation because then that means that we're actually limiting ourselves again. Like this person once said to me, you know, Derek, I'm so upset with myself today. And I said, why? She said, because I didn't, I didn't, do ch I didn't chant with my gohans in. I said, what? You didn't, you didn't do your chants with the gohans in and that's the reason why you're upset with yourself? It completely defeats the purpose, right? Right. So the purpose is, is that we have to recognize in every moment in our life is that the journey of our life is to make, to make choices, to make mistakes, so we get to grow from them, right? So perfection mm -hmm. is only the idea of us recognizing the joy of our own selves, right? Mm -hmm. So going into that, say, so you saying, so ask this, say, are you saying to me that I have all this love to give and I'm looking for a reason to not give it? Are you saying to me that I have all this love to give and I'm looking for a reason to not give it? Yes. And say, and where do you come from, spirit? Did I call you from somewhere to help, to help me not give it? Where do you come from, spirit? Do I call, did I call you did, from somewhere? Did I call you from somewhere to help me not give it? They come from inside of me. Say, do you really come from inside of me? Do or is that what I want to believe? Do you really come from inside of me? Or is that what I want to believe? And that's what I want to believe. Say, is, that, that, is, that, is it because that's what I want to believe because I'm not comfortable going beyond the veil? Is that what I want to believe because I'm not comfortable going beyond the veil? They said, yes. Yes, that's true. You, you sometimes are comfortable and sometimes you get scared. Sometimes you're comfortable and sometimes you get scared. Say, is sometimes a word or is that a word that, you, that I used? Because I'm not comfortable with the spiritual idea that I wouldn't go beyond the veil. Is sometimes a word or is that a word that I use because I'm not comfortable with... The idea. The idea. That I wouldn't go behind the veil. That I wouldn't go behind the veil. Yes, because that was definitely my word that I inserted. Just so everyone knows who's listening on this um, amazing show, spirits don't use the word sometimes. <laughs> I know, I added that in twice. <laughs> that is so funny that you picked up on that immediately because I was trying to translate like what... I really heard, which was more confusing. Right. Well, that's what's, that's the thing is spirits don't, um, they don't ever <laughs> withhold information from you. Um, they don't say sometimes they don't say, <laughs> but they don't say, I don't know. They don't say maybe that if you hear those words, when you're making contacts with spirits, it's because you're adding those words in because you're uncomfortable. Right. Which I was because, yeah, because it's, it's a new journey for me. And a new frontier. Yeah, it is a new frontier. So what else? Let's go a little bit further. Okay, let's keep going. All right. So um, ask the spirit, say, um, removing my judgment. Go ahead. Okay. I'm removing my judgment. Where do you really come from? 
where do you really come from? They come from another planet. Mm -hmm. And um, in, in this place where you come from, are you in the light or the dark? In this place where you come from, are you in the light or the dark? In the light. Say, um, are you in the light? Did you answer that question? Or is that me answering the question because I'm uncomfortable of hearing the truth? Are you in the light? Is that you answering the question? Or is that me answering the question because I'm uncomfortable of hearing the truth? That was me answering the question. Right. Do you see what you see how you did that? Mm -hmm. Right. Because any spirit that holds you back, limits you, uh, helps you with your fear, uh, make, helps you with your, uh, makes you have control issues, um, gives you the ability to hide from the truth or any of these things are not coming from the light. The light doesn't have fear. It doesn't need to protection. It doesn't need to go into any of these types of en human energies because it doesn't operate in that space. It operates only from the place of pure love. And that love in itself is qualified where you're already protected because you're in that energy. And um, so you're, you have everything that you need when you're in that energy. So whenever you go into the idea of lack, limitation, fear, or any of these things, there are definitely other beings coming from uh, another planet or another dimension that is you've called in through your unconscious mind to assist you with something that the light would not assist you with. So ask it, um, what's it like in the, um, in the dark? What's it like in the dark? I'm not getting a clear answer. Say, so am I not getting it because I don't like what you're telling me? Am I not getting it because I don't like what you're telling me? Yes. Right. And so when you don't hear something, when you ever ask spirit, um, it's because you don't like, you're, you're, you're not comfortable because you have judgment about what it's telling you. Okay. So ask the spirit this, say, um, do you want to go to the light? Do you want to go to the light? No. No. Say, is it because when you had a human body, you were told that if you went to the light, you would be destroyed? Is it because when you had a human body, you were told that when you went to the light, you would be destroyed? Yes. And when you died and the light came from you, why did you turn your back on the light? And when you died and the light came from you, why did you turn your back on the light? I don't, I don't know. I'm not getting clear. Say, um, Am I not getting clear because I don't want to hear what, what, what your reasons for going into the dark was? Am I not getting clear because I don't want to hear what your reasons for going into the dark was? Right. Now, do you, do you, do you, I want you to look at this exercise. This is a shamanic exercise, right? Um, this is how we actually connect with spirits, right? And it's about treating spirits the same way you would treat a human being, right? If a human being's talking to you, you're not going to like shut your ears off because you don't like <laughs> what they're saying, mm -hmm. right? But human beings do that. Because we have this part of us that's like, if it doesn't fit within my world, I don't want to hear it. And this is the reason why we continue to stay in conflict on earth. No one wants to interact with the guys who are marching with the swastika uh, uh, flags in Charlottesville. They want to fight them and get mad at them instead of realizing they have fears. They feel, they feel like their race is being wiped out. They feel like they don't have a voice. And when people don't have a voice and they feel afraid, they, ash, they, 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 they lash out. They can lash out sometimes in anger. They can protest or they can march, and so forth. And so we as people on earth have gotten so much of playing the victim that we don't even listen to what's really going on and how we can actually make changes is to interface with the very thing that we actually have um, in, um, an aversion to, right? And so we have to learn. So you said, how do we get to these places? The first key to get these places is stop judging, mm -hmm. right? Stop being afraid of the unknown. Be comfortable talking to the spirit like you would a friend. You yeah. know, when I used to work with these, um, these religious priests in Italy and they were doing exorcisms and I was doing exorcisms and I was learning all the verses in Italian and all this stuff. And, uh, literally I remember going home and talking to my ancestors. And I'm like, there's gotta be an easier way. They're like, just talk to the spirit. You don't need to go into this whole exorcism. Just talk to the spirit, find out what the spirit is doing, ask it what it's doing, why the person called it in and then get the person to take responsibility for it and then interface with it and then heal the person through it and heal the spirit. And I was like, oh, that sounds easy. Right. And it's the whole thing. It's like we we have um, uh, a word, you know, in shamanism is called Talmuntu and Talmuntu means to be able to listen to someone without judgment and stay in a place of love, be able to listen to a spirit without judgment and stay in a place of love, be able to listen to anyone talk about anything 
and stay in a place of love and know that because you're in that place of love, you're not, a, you're not in threat, you're not in fear, and you're not being attacked. And so if you remember Talmuntu, you understand this uh, staying in that, in that core place. And so now ask the spirit, say, um, is it, can, can the darkness move forward? Is, can, uh, is, the, is the reason why the darkness can't transcend into the light because humans are um, in judgment of you? Is the reason why darkness can't transcend into the light is because humans are in judgment of you? Yes. Ask the darkness, say, um, did we come to earth to, to free you? Did we come to earth to free you? No. Say, um, are you saying no because you don't want us to free you? Are you saying no because you don't want us to free you? Yes. Do you hear what, what's happening? Do you hear that that the reason why we're here is not our jobs. It's not anything about being a shaman or being a chef or being this person or being that person. This is a love story. The reason why I came back from the other side is because of love. I came back, not just for the people. I came back for the darkness. We're all here for the darkness. Our brothers and sisters are in that realm, trapped because they don't believe they can come home to love because they can't forgive themselves for what they did when they had a human body. And so they, are, they created an upside down world where they stay in this perpetual state of whatever it is that they feel they can't let go of. And they need a host and we, are, we let our bodies become a host to them. And as we let them integrain into our consciousness, as we lift our consciousness, we lift them. This is what new age people talk about in Ascension. This is, a, this is what uh, Christian people talk about in the second coming of Christ. I mean, everyone has a different name for it. This is what we, what we call the convergence, the true convergence. The convergence is, is for us to be able to go into the darkness without fear, shine our light of love unconditionally, no matter what is being told to us, no matter what that person did, and bring, their love, bring them through our love back into the light. So what you're going to do is you're going to help this spirit go home, okay? So what I want you to do is say, spirit, I'm taking you into the light. Spirit, I'm taking you into the light. And I'm taking you deeper into the light. And I'm taking you deeper into the light. And I'm taking you deeper into the light of unconditional love. And I'm taking you deeper into the light of unconditional love. Now, how do you feel now, spirit, that I've taken you into the light? How do you feel now, spirit, that I've taken you into the light? Good. Um, can you see what you were doing to me when you weren't in the light? Yeah. Can you see what you were doing to me when you weren't in the light? Yes. And what do you want to say to me now that you're in the light? And what do you want to say to me now that you're in the light? I'm sorry. They didn't, they didn't mean to drag me down. You see that? Mm-hmm. And um, say, are you ready to return home with your family that's waiting for you on the other side? Are you ready to return home to your family that's waiting for you on the other side? Say, who's come for you? Who's come for you? Say exactly what it said to you. <laughs> it said uh, their wife and their kids, Good. their daughters. That's right. Good. See, you're listening. Is that listening. what you that's heard? That's exactly right. What? <laughs> yes, my darling. You're doing great. <laughs> say um I'm, I'm i'm so happy that you chose me to transcend through i'm so happy that you chose me to transcend through and goodbye and goodbye now notice how your body feels right now <sighs> way lighter that's right whoa my heart feels so much more clear so much more open that's right So you heard that too. Of course. Well, yeah. I listen to all of them. Yeah, you do. What? Yes. And this is what the world doesn't want to look at. They want to find the villain. They want to, they want to, they don't realize that all villains were once good. But some point of them, something happened where fear got in, the plague. And the plague is real. When I see these zombie movies all around, I'm like, oh, I know what that is. That's just an example of what's really happening on the planet. People are being affected by the dark matter and they're turn, it's getting into their spirit first, then it gets into their mind, then they start thinking negative thoughts, then it affects their emotion, and then the emotion projects it in the physical world and they start living these, and then things start, going un, un, things start happening in their physical world that 
is a reflection of that of that energy and it's uncomfortable for them. And then they go and they look to workshops and they go and take these classes and they go to do yoga and they go and do these fasts and these cleanse and this and that and the other. But what they don't realize is that you can go every cleanse you want to go on, but as long as you keep negative thoughts going in your head, you're feeding yourself poison. So you have to go in and, com- and, and take responsibility that you brought in some being that's coming from the underworld that is, that is uh, protecting you for something that you don't want to use your power for. So for you, it was to love greater. So you called this spirit in, stop me from loving greater by showing me the examples of things that irritate me and other people where they take, 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 so I can close myself down and then I can be like safe. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. And now that you've transcended that spirit, notice how you feel in your heart. So much lighter, so much more open and released. Yeah. I feel all re- like a different person. Like my body feels completely different. Right. Now go like this. Say, spirits of the light. Spirits of the light. Ignite my heart fire. Ignite my heart fire. What do you feel? I feel it. I feel (laughs) ignited. I feel like... You feel that? Yeah. Now say, increase it and send it through my whole body. Increase it and send it through my whole body. Say, make it even stronger and open up my capacity to see colors in the realm of, of the physical. Make it even stronger and open up my capacity to see colors in the realm of the physical. Wow. Now what? <laughs> I see... I see a major white light around you. Just, now say, you're enveloped. Now say, remove the next filter, spirits of the light, and use my heart fire. Remove the next filter, spirits of the light, and use my heart fire. Oh my God. That crazy thing is happening where I'm looking at your face and I'm seeing other faces. Right. You can see all the spirits that I am in one body. Oh my God, that's so crazy. Now ask for the next filter to be removed. Spirits of the light. Spirits of the light. Use my heart fire. Use my heart fire. To remove the third filter. To remove the third filter. Now what? Oh my gosh. You can see the real me. That's right. I do see the real you. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Now take it one step further. Let's ignite your powers for healing. Put your hand in front of you, out in front of you, and like this. Good. <laughs> Say spirits of the light. Spirits of the light. Ignite my heart fire and open up my healing ability. Ignite my heart fire and open up my healing abilities. Bring electricity through my left hand. Bring electricity through my left hand. I feel that. Feel that? Mm-hmm. I'll say increase it. Increase it. Perhaps you want to download the symbols of Reiki. Perhaps you've never been initiated in Reiki. Go so bring the Reiki symbols through my body and initiate me now. Bring the Reiki symbols through my body and initiate me now. Invoke Shokure through my hand. Invoke Shokure through my hand. See? Mm-hmm. And you can access any healing power in all the universe. That's incredible. Now watch this. Say spirits of the light. Spirits of the light. Use the fire of my heart to make me lighter. Use the fire of my heart to make me lighter. Tell everyone what you feel. I feel so connected. So, so light. Released. Open. Kind of 
speechless by how connected I feel looking at you, seeing the true you, which is not the you that I have looked at many, many, many times. I mean, it's all you. Visually, I'm seeing something very different. Of course. And I feel so connected and so happy full of love. Let's take that a little bit higher. Say spirits of the light. Spirits of the light. Use my heart fire. Use my heart fire. And bring laughter into my body. And bring laughter into my body. Now say increase it more. Increase it more. Good. And make it stronger. And make it stronger. And everything that's ever blocked me from laughter and joy. And Everything that's ever blocked me from laughter and joy. Bring the poisons out of my mouth and throat through deep yawn or cough. Bring the poisons out of my mouth and throat through deep yawn or cough. What do you feel them doing in your body? I feel them working. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now say penetrate my layers. Penetrate my layers. And bring my intuition into the poison. And bring my intuition into the poison. And pull more out of my body. And pull more out of my body. And breathe. You feel that twitch in your arm? Good. And breathe. Good. Now say increase it. Increase it. Good. You see, there is so much power in our species, on this planet, in nature, in animals, in everything. All we have to do is remember to remove the filters, awaken our sensorium, and reconnect ourselves to who we are. We've never been disconnected, but the mind has hijacked it itself because of the world, the matrix, the viewpoints of society that have been filtered into your mind since you were a child. All of these things can be reprogrammed and the change of metamorphosis inside of you will grow and your powers will expand and you will not look outside of yourself. You will only see yourself and you will see everyone inside of you. So beautiful. I wish everyone could see what I see right now. I can't take my eyes off of you because I see so much. There's white light just everywhere around you. Your eyes are popping like so white, the whites of your eyes, because everything else is just kind of melting away. Yes, because you remove the filters. Now imagine if you move the filters to reason, taking your intuition higher. You know, women only operate at the level two intuition. They can go to level 12 and they'll be able to really change the world. Or imagine that you decide to extend more capacity in your synapses of your brain. Perhaps you want to be able to sense more energy when you touch things. Perhaps you want to walk in a room and change the energy frequency when you sense negativity back into love. You just have to push. There's all these amazing things that we shamans can teach you. But a lot of shamans have, you know, they have gotten very, uh, how do I say, lackadaisal in the sense of just giving people plant medicines and having them go on a little experience, but showing them the back door to creation, but not showing them the tools on how to access the powers to use those informations that they're getting. It's like reading a book, but not understanding how to access the power that was given to you in the book. Mm-hmm. See, what I, what I do with people is I don't play in that playground. I'm not playing into the guru consciousness, the hierarchy, the I'm the shaman, woohoo, I'm more powerful than you. Absolutely not. I am here to show you what you are capable of being and doing and make it easy for you. Watch. Say spirits of the light. Spirits of the light. Ignite my heart energy. And awaken my abilities to hear the spirits. Ignite my heart energy and awaken my abilities to hear the spirits. Now, say guides, are you here? Guides, are you here with me? 
Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. Is it really this easy? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. People take like workshops. Right. They go to mountains. They climb mountains. They go to India. They get sick. They get worms in their stomach. They they go through all kinds of. Oh, I have to go through this thing. I'm going through this retreat and blah 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 blah. I said, come on, people. These things are easy. Mm-hmm. Spirits don't make things hard. We do. Yes. That makes a ton of sense to me. Wow. So can you totally hear my spirits right now or see them or both? Of course. How many? Oh, that's a big question. <laughs> I know. Your, your, I'm very your curious. Actual, your, your actual guide content of the ones who are actually coming in and out working with you is 106. That many? Now, what did you think? You had like three guides? Yeah, I was thinking like six. Oh, that's the ones you're aware of. Right. There's a bunch of guides that work at different, um, they come in, they're not, all, they're not all operating, they're all watching you, and, but they all are working on different levels. Mm-hmm. So is there like a master guide or they're all within? I know that's a very new age thing. They call it the master guide. Let me just ask the council members of this uh, clarification of master guide. Council members, um, explain to me this understanding of master guide. The one who intercedes with you the most, I see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you do have a master guide, um, if that's how you want to interpret it. Um, you have a female um, guide who, who works with you directly. Um, she's helped you a lot in being able to overcome things in your family. And she's helped you a lot to be able to make decisions when it comes to a place where you get, because you end up getting into these kind of roadblocks. And she's the one who helps you get out of those roadblocks. She's also the one who deals with the other guides to help you facilitate a lot of the knowledge and things about, you know, um, interdimensional planes and this kind of stuff. She's very highly advanced being. And she's here to teach you how to love, but also to not put yourself in a place where you're not asking for what you need. So mm-hmm. her. So uh, let me ask her a question. Uh, what is the message that you want to give her right now? Since uh, since we're here with her right now, what is it that you want to, the message you want to give her? I want her to know that she's very powerful and a beautiful being, and that I've been with her since she was born. I want her to know that she needs to dance and she needs to let herself get back into the movement of her body and to feel free to express herself by opening herself up to speaking and sharing her wisdom with women and children so that she's able to facilitate a new understanding of the wellness of self so that one can fill their vessel and be able to give more without the feeling of depletion and loss. That's powerful. That speaks to me. That's what she said. Yeah. Yeah. The depletion and loss is, is a way of describing what I was saying before. Well, she Um, says it comes back from your childhood. Mm-hmm. Because you've had examples in your family members of depletion and loss, of mm-hmm. sacrifice, and constantly depleting themselves and not being able to be present in the way that they should. Yes, absolutely. That's interesting and that's correct. Does she, this guide of mine, know anything about the numbers that I see all the time? Uh, she does, she doesn't deal with the numbers part. Um, but the numbers she says are qualifications for you to, to open up and ask for the transmission code download. So whenever you see the number, she said, you're supposed to ask for the download and then stay quiet for like 10 Mm -hmm. seconds till you get the download. And then it's going to open up new information for you. They're not just numbers. She said they're actually, um, pathways of information and data. That makes sense. They've been intense lately. Wow. And she keeps saying seven. She keeps bringing up seven, seven. and three. She keeps three. bringing three, 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 and seven, seven. And she's bringing up a, um, what's it? Uh, say it again. Yeah, she's saying seven is an, a number that you, when you see it, you need to download. She said, but it's going to come once in a while. Three, three, three is going to come the most. But then she said 11, 11 also comes, but it's also coming once in a while. But she said that three, three, three is the strong number that she wants you to download from. That makes sense. I've been seeing it so much lately, more than ever. Yeah. Like, but she said that's your master download. That's when, okay. That's when the spirits are going to download you with where you, once you get a download, what happens is the download goes in and then the information gets filtered into your, um, your cerebrum cortex. And then the information codes go inside of your synapses and your electrodes. So it actually urges you to go to certain places and be at certain places at certain times to meet certain people that are going to open up certain doorways or connect you with certain things. But if you don't accept the download, 
then you don't get on that path. That's why the numbers, and the reason why the, they, they created these numbers is because they needed to be available for everyone because there are some people who are atheists and some people who are religious, but everyone sees 111111. 11, 11. Right. Everyone is seeing the 333, 444, 777, 666, 555. And these are all download codes necessary for their download. I see. That's fascinating. That's the first time I've ever heard that. Yeah, a lot numbers. of times people like make a wish. I was like, make a wish. <laughs> right. That's me. Eleven, eleven, make a wish. I'm like, make a wish. <laughs> I was You're like, like, why uh, are you making a no. wish? They oh accept the God. download. <laughs> right. See, eleven, eleven, the download. be like, I accept the download. Stay quiet for ten seconds and receive the download. Breathe. Take deep breaths to receive it. And then you'll feel the energy transmission go into your system. And then all of a sudden, all these things are going to open up for you. That's unbelievable. I'm going to start saying that instead of 11-11, make a wish. Yeah. As the people in my life have heard me say yeah. many, 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 many times. It's okay. It was multiple very, it decades. Was very, someone came up with that whole idea um, in a very new age kind of way. And I understand it, you know, mm-hmm. it is kind of making a wish, but it's a different kind of wish. You're getting a download. Exactly. That's so cool. So, oh my gosh, I feel like I have so much to learn from you. I could sit here for forever. Do you ever do like trainings for people or is that not something that you do? No, I do. I do uh, shaman boot camps where we basically take like different traditional things from different tribes and I teach people how to access those powers and then be able to be able to um, and the classes can be very advanced to non-advanced where some the classes are advanced where people are literally um, you know, we have buckets where people throw up and they go through all these different changes. Some people are like transversing to different dimensions, um, going through the color fields, um, experiencing family members from the other side, coming and talking to them, healing ancestral wounds. Uh, some of the things they're learning how to do is how to, you know, how to build fire in their energy, how to use fire to heal certain things in their body, electricity, uh, learn how to uh, master the wheel of water, like the portals of water, the portal of fire, the portal of air, um, the portal of nature and earth, um, and then how to access those, those energies, how to communicate to the network of trees, plants, um, how to pull medicines from the spirit world. Like, uh, for instance, like, okay, so like, uh, like, say spirits of the light. Spirits of the light. Access the second coordinate. Access the second coordinate. Remove the access barrier behind my neck. Remove the access barrier behind my neck. Take a deep breath. Release it. Don't hold your breath. Never hold your breath. Okay, good. Now say, remove the access energy under my navel. Remove the access energy under my navel. And get it to flow. And get it to flow. Breathe. Good. Breathe again. Good. Now say open up gate 45. Open up gate 45. 72. 72. And 109. And 109. Breathe. Good. Breathe. Good. Now say Access the energy on our planet. Access the energy on our planet. Of ecstasy. Of ecstasy. And bring it into my body and my blood cells. And bring it into my body and my blood cells. Through the cordant. Through the cordant. How's that medicine feel? Unbelievable. Feel your skin. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> This, it's so powerful. So like sometimes I'll have a kid who works with me and they get, you know, they are someone's in pain. I'll bring, you know, aspirin or pain things into them. We have different plant medicines on the other side. So we have different medicines in the spirit world than the ones that are here. So the ones that are here are only limited based on the consciousness. So you only are able to find the medicines based on how much you evolve on the planet. And then as the collective evolves, the wind spirits and the water spirits then reveal open up the energy so that nature sends a signal code to someone on the physical plane, a human, to how to find their plant, how to find that plant, how to access that plant, right? Even with indigenous cultures, a lot of shamans will teach you in indigenous tribes that their access to the plants are only what nature lets them know of, right? And so um, nature calls to you to say, hey, we have this for you, take this. That's why I always say water is intelligent, air is intelligent, because they're all reading the consciousness and then they tell nature how to adapt. Like the water tells nature how to adapt, what kind of plants should be, you know, how the animals should adapt. They're drinking it, they're eating it, it goes into their brain and it tells them how to respond to the environment, to the ecosystem. But we have medicines here, but there's also amazing medicines in the spirit world that are like mind blowing medicines, you know, and being a spirit shaman. That's, you know, one of the things we do is we work only with spirit. So like, I don't put poisons in my body. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't put drugs in my system. I don't put anything on the physical realm that would actually hurt my physical being because each organ and everything is a spirit. 
And so I honor these spirits and love them. And, and I'm not here to judge people if they choose to do those things. That's their choice. But I, for myself, I need to be the most clearest vessel for the service of human, for, for humankind. And um, in order to do that, I have to be able to, to be studious in my ability to bring knowledge and information from like the very smallest um, uh, data stream that I can pick up on in the outer galaxy and draw it here to Earth. Um, either be it for a construction of something or developing some tool or creating a new healing technique or drawing a new symbol that will give people the access to use healing forms on a higher level. But very much like the healing symbols of Reiki and all the, the Joe Ray and all the healing symbols you see came from, from these other realms that were, that, you know, were passed down to a human being who actually opened up and picked up on that, that signal code and then drew it into their download process and was able to you know, draw it and, and bring it to life in our planet. So all of these things. So when I'm teaching people, I teach them about all these things, but I basically look at where they're at. Um, if it's judgment, we break down your judgment. If it's fear of feeling, we break down your fear of feeling. If you have adversions to things, we make you face them. You know, when I say make you, meaning that we, we, we ask you to, the choice is yours ultimately. We're not, and that's another thing too. You always know the difference between a real shaman and a shaman who's just not a real shaman is that we're not, we don't get mad at you. We're not here to get mad at you ever. And no spirit gets mad at you. Like you'll never hear an angel get mad at you or an, uh, a fairy or any kind of being in the, in the nature kingdom or any kind of um, and being in the, in the spirit world. They don't get mad. Mad is a, is a fear-based energy belonging to the under, under dimensions. There is no fear, so there's no need to be angry, right? And so the consciousness of, of, of the connection is to be able to accept love and then support, right? And so when I teach people, I'm here to accept, to help you to get to that place. And then I see where you can go. And then we basically figure out, okay, this is where you're at. And then we help you get from there to get your power. But every person who even comes in and sees me or works with me, they all get like the first time they see me, they get this amazing power that comes in their body. And they're just like, whoa. And like kids love it because kids will like be practicing with their electricity. And like, you know, one woman came in and she wanted to lose weight really quick. So, you know, I taught her how to access powers in the spirit world that help her lose weight quickly. So there's all these really great things. A pregnant woman came in yesterday and I was helping her to be able to decompress her system from the energies that she's dealing with in her family so that the baby's not being affected in, in its growth process. You know, um, I teach a lot, I talk a lot about women pregnancy and how, you know, it's a rites of passage on its own and that, you know, women have to be more safeguarded and have much more of a nest egg, a nesting to, for, for them to bring life into uh, to earth. So there's all these things. There's so many things I can, we can talk about. And when I'm back in town, you know, we can, I'll come back on and. Yeah, we can... we'll definitely do a follow up because it's endless. I'm so fascinated by everything you do. I'm still completely like stuck at the place where I saw your face change into a whole different face, which is something that I just love and has only happened to me one other time ever with the shaman also. And it's so beautiful. It means that you're such a clear portal and such an open vessel of love and light. And it could make me cry because it's, it's amazing. And, and what you're seeing in me is what you see in yourself. So everything you just said, you're saying to you. That's pretty awesome mm -hmm. and really powerful and, and true. I feel that way. Yeah. And I want everyone to feel that way. And everyone listening is lucky because you tour all around the world. Yes. So wherever people are listening, there's a really good chance that you'll be able to get a session. Um, you travel. I do. All. Yeah. So I do. I mean, I travel everywhere. I mean, I do also Skype sessions too, where, you know, people are like, does it work through Skype? I mean, I had a woman in Germany and she's like, I don't know if it's going to work. And then she had fell off her couch because the, shop, the spirits went in her body and she was oh like God. clearing all this energy. And she's like, oh my God, the whole room is spinning and there's all these colors. And I'm like, yeah, I told you. It's, it's, yeah, just, it works. it's just a computer. It's not that difficult. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I can transfer medicine, you know, it's not a difficulty. But um, also, you know, on Instagram, I do a lot of videos. Um, people can scroll through my old images and stuff. I do a lot of shamanic videos teaching you things that you can incorporate in your life as well as my Instagram lives. I'm delivering oh, a yeah, lot I've of- seen you go live. So cool that you're doing that. Yeah, it's, you know, because people are like, oh, we want to, you know, still have you. And I made it like, I really want to be there for the people. So live is a great way for people to interact with me, ask questions about things, learn how to connect into things. And I just love people. I love people. Yes, it's so apparent. It's, it's such a cool thing. And it definitely radiates outward and I think touches everyone that you meet. And it's amazing. I'm honored. I'm honored. I'm happy to be on planet Earth. And I'm thankful, you know, for myself 
to to be here. Like uh, it's so funny because um, I, I'm doing this. Uh, I'm in Miami, and I'm doing. Uh, you know, if you want to see me live, you can. Uh, if you're in, if you're in Miami area. I'm doing the Ohm Festival, and you can look it up as the Ohm Festival. You can also go on my page and look it up, and uh, it'll be up on my website soon at shamanduric.com. But I'm doing the Ohm Festival, and you know, I just I, I, I I'm so excited to be able to like be around people and, and share ideas, and you know, and and invite them into the conversation of their own power. You know, it's just like it's so awesome. Like I always tell people, one of the things you you, you have to be be mindful of is like whenever someone is putting themselves down in front of you, you just don't tolerate it. You're like, uh uh-uh, uh, no. Because I love you, I gotta stop you right now. You're mm-hmm. not gonna beat up on yourself in front of me. You're not gonna put your bad words on yourself because you 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 know, I don't I don't it's like you're not letting people degrade themselves and play small anymore. Like there's no room for playing small anymore, right? Mm-hmm. And it's like so either we're we're either creating pollution or we're being the solution. And I think that um you know, being there for people is like the most important thing. And a lot of times it, right now where we are right now, because of the 2012 and shamanism, we have the 2012, which marks the 15 year of dark period. That means that every single thing we have not put through the lens of love, um, acceptance and taking responsibility for, including nature, is going to rise up and show us, you know, where we're not taking action. And so um, it's going it, it's, it's to be very interesting to see people really coming out and being like, hey, I, I got things to do now, you know, and it's, it's so awesome. So yeah, so I'm going to be doing the, the Miami Ohm Festival where you can definitely see me. And if you do see me around, if you see me on the street, or if you see me wherever, come up and give me a hug. I love hugs. Yes, you're a hugger. Yeah, you yeah, I'm give a the best hugs. Beautiful. So people can find you on Instagram, on your website. And I'll wrap up with the final question that I ask everybody who comes on the podcast, which is if you were a color, what color would you be and why? Pink. Um, I would be pink because pink is my favorite color and aqua blue. But I I said pink first because it's one of my favorites. And the reason why is because it's vibrant, it's energy. It's powerful. It moves energy. It's not, it doesn't, um, it intrudes a little bit, but it doesn't. Um, but it's soft intrusion, which is like soft love to me. And if I feel like it really represents my personality of how I feel inside. Um, it's also sensual and passionate and, um, and purposeful in, in its color. I love it. I can totally see you as pink. Yeah. Even though I saw you surrounded by white and that was a magical thing to see. So pink is a great answer. I love it. Thank you so much for being here. It's an honor. It's an honor. Thank you for having me. Definitely, definitely going to have you back on. And I want to continue learning from you. Maybe we'll all have to book you for some Skype sessions because I think you're so powerful and it's amazing. Thank you so much. It's an honor to serve you. Thank you. (laughs) Bye, honey. Yay. Thanks so much, guys, for listening to this episode with Shaman Durek. I hope you fell in love with him just as much as I did. And I'm quite positive that you did because I think it would be really hard not to. He's amazing. And I just wanted to remind you guys about the offer that I have for those of you who are kind enough to rate and review this podcast. I'm assuming if you listen all the way to the end, then perhaps you enjoyed this episode and it would be so awesome for me if you would be willing to rate and review the podcast in iTunes by going to the iTunes store, typing in the Balance Bond podcast, and then clicking on the rating and review section to leave your honest rating and review. Send it my way by a screenshot to my email and I will send you my blogging tips and tricks document that I save specifically for those of you who rate and review the podcast because I'm so grateful. So thank you for listening. If you choose to rate and review, that's awesome. If you don't want to at all, that's awesome too. I'm just happy to have you here. I appreciate you guys so much. I appreciate Shaman Durek for coming on this podcast and being so honest and so authentic. I think that is what we need more of in the world. And I bet we can all agree on that. So thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you for being here. Join the Soul on Fire podcast drive on Facebook. Join the Spirit Juice newsletter and have an amazing day.